I am going to walk you through potentially my favorite sewing project ever, which is this insanely cute bag. So how it's going to work, the main part of the bag is an existing pattern. And so I'm going to show you how I hack it to add the bows and add this quilted strap, which is slightly different than the instructions of this pattern. So there are two different patterns that you can use to make the main part of the bag. I'll walk through kind of both of them. I really don't have a preference, but I'll kind of show you the main differences. This one is the Crosstown Crescent Bag by Gray Sew Makes. I'll link that one below. And she also has a really, really awesome YouTube tutorial so that if you want to follow along like the main construction of the bag with her, go to her video. I'll link that below as well. And then the second bag pattern is the Bestie Bag from Blackbird Fabrics. And I've made both of them. So this one is the original red bag that I made. You can see the shape is just slightly different and that's one of the main differences really. So this one is a little bit more like banana shaped and then you can see the Crosstown Crescent bag is a little bit more like U shaped. Aside from the shape of the bag, the other main difference is the way that the lining is finished. I'll show you on the unfinished bag that we're gonna be working on today. So this one is the Crosstown Crescent bag and you can see that the way the raw edges are finished is with this bias binding. I'll also mention the Crosstown Crescent bag has instructions for one zipper pocket to be on the inside, but I just prefer to have these open pockets. So on one side I have one open pocket and then on the other side, I have two open pockets. And these pockets are basically what the bestie bag pockets are. So it's a little bit of a mashup. Essentially, I just do the pockets differently. But this is how the lining is finished for the Crosstown Crescent bag. And then I'll show you the lining for the bestie bag. It's just finished separately. So there's no bias tape involved. So if bias tape scares you in any way, maybe you want to do the bestie bag. I personally don't have a preference between, between the two linings. I feel like they're both fairly easy. It's just kind of a personal preference thing. So this is the inside of the bestie bag. You can see there's no bias tape on it. It's finished separately. And yeah, you can see those pockets are the same as the other bag. So yeah, the two differences are the shape and the lining. Other than that, I feel like both bags are very beginner friendly. Both bags have YouTube tutorials. Like I mentioned, the Crosstown Crescent bag already has a YouTube tutorial and I filmed a YouTube tutorial for the bestie bag as well, which I'll link below. So you can follow either one of those if you want help on the actual construction of the bags. A couple quick things I'm gonna walk through before we get started on construction. So fabric recommendations. For the main fabric, I use a Kona quilting cotton. It's a pretty basic quilting cotton, but it's high quality. The shade is really pretty, so I'll link that below. And then I also use a high loft batting for my quilting and I quilt all the panels separately. So I like I quilt these two panels and then the under panel. And then I also quilt this piece here as well. I'm not going to walk through the quilting process today, but if you want a tutorial on that, let me know. And then for the lining fabric, I use a utility nylon. So you can see it's like wipeable. You can kind of hear it scratch. And I like to use that in my bags just because if anything like spills or gets messy or whatever in the bag, it cleans up really nicely. And I feel like it sews up nicely as well. I'll link the lining that I use also. Okay, so aside from all of the things that you'll normally need to make either of those bag patterns, there are a couple pieces of fabric and things that you're going to need for the bows and the quilted strap that are different from the pattern. First up for the strap. So I'll kind of show you the finished strap. I top stitch mine in three rows and it's also not adjustable. So for both patterns, they come with instructions for an adjustable strap, whether it's made with the same fabric as the main part of the bag or if you're using like a nylon webbing. I personally didn't want the look of an adjustable strap like hanging down over the bow, which is why I made it just one length. So that's the version of the strap that I'm going to walk through with you today. So the strip of fabric you're going to need for your strap. Mine is three and a half inches by 31 inches. And I'll explain the batting in just a second. But this is my strip of fabric for the strap. No matter what size you are, you are going to want it to be three and a half inches wide because the part of the bag where the strap comes out, which is this part right here that you're going to insert it through, is one and a half inches wide. So with seam allowance, you are going to want your strap to be three and a half inches wide because we're going to fold it in half. And then to get the length of your strap, you're going to want to measure your body where the bag strap will lie. So like for me, it comes like right below my bust. 
and then around to like mid back here. I'm gonna stand up so you can see better. So you can kind of see this hits me like right under my bust and then wraps all the way around to my mid back. So for me, that measurement is 30 inches and then I add an extra inch for seam allowance. So do the same for you, measure that, especially if you're a much larger or smaller size than me, you're going to want to measure your own strap, especially if it's not going to be adjustable. Okay, and then also on the strap, you need to have a strip of quilt batting. So for the rest of my bag, I used a high loft batting, but for the strap, I used a medium loft batting just because I didn't want it to be too poofy. And the batting you want to be just half the size of the strap. So for me, mine is 31 inches by 1.75 inches. There's the strap. Last couple things you're going to need. You need two little pieces of fabric for the tabs of the bag, and that's what you tie the bows onto so that they can be removable. So you can see here, there's like this tab piece that you're going to tie the bows onto. Those two little pieces of fabric are going to be two inches by 1.75 inches. And then the last thing you need is fabric for the bows. So I have two long strips here. My measurements are two inches by 44 inches. And those lengths of fabric will get you bows that will hang just below the curve of the bag. I wanted my bows to come down just a little bit past the curve of the bag um, and also hang a bit over the sides here. So if you want bows that are much bigger, smaller, if you want the tails to hang much shorter or much longer, you can kind of adjust from there, but mine are 44 inches. But we are going to be picking up construction of the bag when it is at this stage, which is when the lining is finished, the bag is finished, the zipper's in, everything's done. We just need to add the strap. That's the only thing left in the instructions and both the Crosstown Crescent bag and the Bestie bag both come to this stage near the end where all you need to do is add the strap. One other thing I'll mention, and this is more specifically for the Crosstown Crescent bag, but with the bias binding, you can see I don't bring mine all the way up to the top. And I believe the instructions for the Crosstown Crescent bag say they don't need to be all the way at the top. I would just be very, very mindful of this because basically this area right here is where you're going to be sewing your bow tabs onto. And if you've brought your seam allowance in too far or this bias tape has kind of crept in too far or gone too far up here, it's going to be a lot trickier to put those tabs on there. So I would just be very mindful as you're making your bag that you make sure you're leaving like a nice open canvas here. And also I wouldn't worry about these raw edges because once you sew your bow tab right here, everything from like here and above is gonna be closed off within the bag. So leave those, it's totally fine. Okay, I think that is everything. I know that is so much information and the actual like walkthrough of this stuff is gonna go probably way faster than me talking at you for five minutes, but feel like that was all important information and it's time to get started on your bow bags. We're going to start with the strap of the bag. So take the strip of fabric that you cut for the strap and you're going to pin the batting that you cut for the strap to one side. And if your fabric has different right sides and wrong sides, then pin it to the wrong side of the fabric. Then you're going to fold your strip of fabric in half, right sides together, so that the batting is kind of sitting on top of the fabric. You're going to stitch along the side with a quarter inch seam allowance, and this will also be stitching the batting in place so that when you turn it right side out, everything will stay where it's supposed to be. To turn your strap inside out, you're going to put a safety pin into the seam allowance of your strap, and then you're going to put that safety pin down inside the channel that you've created and kind of keep pushing it down and pulling the fabric and pushing and pulling until your strip is completely turned inside out. And just a little bit of a tip here, since this is a little bit more complicated than a normal turning inside out job with the batting involved, you want to be pulling on the actual fabric, not the batting. And don't worry too much about the batting getting all crumpled up within the channel. You're going to smooth it out after. The stitch you put in place will kind of keep everything where it needs to be, um, so don't stress too much about that. Once it's turned all right side out, you can kind of feel in there where the batting is kind of twisted or bunched up, and you can just take your thumbs and kind of massage it into a flat, even layer. Then we're going to take our iron and press it very gently all along the strap. And you wanna be kind of careful here because with the batting inside, if you press it too much, it will flatten down like a pancake. And we do want some puffiness, so I just iron it very lightly and gently. 
To top stitch, I do three rows and I do my two outer rows at about a quarter inch seam allowance. So you can see I kind of run along the strap first at a quarter inch seam allowance on one end, then I pivot my needle around, go along the other edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then to go through the middle, I just put my needle in the center position um, and run right along the center of the strap. And I'll also mention I changed my stitch length to four millimeters instead of the standard 2.5, just because I find it a little bit easier to go through all of those layers with a bit of a longer stitch length. Okay, beautiful. Now that your strap is complete, we are going to insert it and attach it to the bag. So push your straps up through your little strap holes that you have prepped. And when you're doing this, you just wanna make sure that the strap isn't twisted so that it comes out flat when you turn your bag inside out. Once that's pinned in place, you are going to stitch with a half inch seam allowance here. And I go back and forth a few times just because I really wanna make sure my strap is not going anywhere. Those two ends should look something like this, and then you're going to want to trim away the seam allowance. That will especially help when you're adding the bow tabs. Um, just be careful that you don't snip through your stitches. Go ahead and turn those ends inside out, and then I often have to take something like the end of my scissors, not with the pokey part though, and kind of poke those corners out just a little bit to give them a more crisp corner. You can turn the rest of your bag inside out now and I just want to make a note here that with both patterns there are instructions to top stitch your bag. I've opted not to for a couple reasons. One, just because of all of the fabric and batting, it's pretty difficult to do. And number two, with the Crosstown Crescent bag, the bias binding around the lining, I find that that gives it enough structure that you don't really need the top stitching. Now we are going to move on to the bow tabs. So take those two little pieces of fabric that you cut two inches by 1.75 inches and you're going to fold them in half the hamburger way or the wide way. I know it's a little bit tricky to tell because they're almost squares. And then you're going to stitch along that raw edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then you're going to take something skinny and blunt like the eraser end of a pencil and turn these little tabs inside out. That will create a tiny little tube of fabric which you are going to press flat and i also trimmed up the very very edges of this so that there are no weird raw frayed threads then you're going to take the ends of these little bow tabs and fold them under a quarter inch so that both ends are folded down looking something like this and you're going to want to press those really really well with the iron to hold them in place now take that bow tab and you're going to put it in place on your bag and you can kind of feel around this spot and you'll be able to feel the bias tape in the bag and the seam allowance in the bag. So the bow tab is nestled in this really nice hollow space. I'm only gonna be using one pin just on this side because it holds the whole thing in place and stays out of the way for the first stitch, which will be on this right hand side. We are going to start at the top here and make a teeny tiny little rectangle. To create this rectangle, I'm going to start at that top right hand corner and stitch first along the edge of the bow tab and then turning the whole bag around, I'm gonna do one or two stitches perpendicular and then turn everything back around again to go up the other side of the rectangle. And you can see here, I have to do quite a bit of manipulating and twisting and turning and using the hand wheel and I'm kind of just really helping guide my machine through this rectangle just because there's so much fabric and there's so many different thicknesses of fabric going on that the dog feeds don't always grab the things I want it to grab. So don't lose patience. You might need to help your machine out a little bit here, but go slow and you'll get through it. This is what the rectangle should look like from the front side and then again on the back side. And just keep in mind, you're going to need to feed the bows through this bow tab. So if your rectangle is too wide, it won't fit. Go ahead and repeat that process on the other side of the bow tab so that you're creating a second teeny tiny rectangle. And again, really make sure that that rectangle doesn't get too wide or else the bows are not going to be able to slide through this bow tab. The end result should end up looking something like this and give yourself a pat on the back because that was the trickiest part and you got through it. All right, we are on to the last step. The only thing we have left to do is to make the bows. So take your bow strips that you cut and we are going to fold them in half, right sides together and stitch along this long raw edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're going to use the same method that we use to turn the strap inside out. It'll just be way easier this time because there's no batting involved. So put that safety pin into the seam allowance, push the safety pin down into the channel you've created, and then push and pull and push and pull until the entire thing is again turned inside out. 
It will be quite wrinkled and rumpled once it's all turned the right way around. So you're going to want to take your iron and press everything flat um, and then trim up just the very, very ends so that there are no threads sticking out. Now you're going to take the ends of this long skinny bow that you're making and fold them under a quarter inch two times. So kind of think of it as like rolling up a sleeping bag, but flat sort of, um, and then set the iron on that. I like to leave that on for a little while to make it nice and flat and then do that to both of your ends. Those ends should end up looking something like this. And then all we have left to do is stitch those in place. This is another instance where you may need to kind of help your machine out a little bit, just depending on what fabric you're using, what machine you have. Um, those feed dogs may not be picking up the way you want them to. So I definitely had to use my hand wheel a little bit, use um, my presser foot a little bit, but it should end up looking something like this. All that's left to do now is tie your bows in place, which is extremely exciting. So push your bows up through that tab and it is made to be quite snug so that the bows aren't falling out of place, but it should still fit. Like you should be able to put it in pretty easily. And this is how I tie my bows. I've tried not to speed it up too, too much just because I feel like I really have my method down so you can kind of follow what I do. And not only are the tabs amazing for being able to remove the bows if you don't want them on some days, but they're also really great for making different color bows if you want, or you can tie a ribbon on there or keychains or whatever you want to do. Once you've tied both of your bows in place, your bag is completely done. And I hope you get so much wear out of this one. I am actually shocked, but I wear it genuinely every day. I feel like it goes with everything. Good job. Your bag is cute and you're cute.